Anoint this word in the name of Jesus, I pray. Pat Love here from Love Healing Hearts, led once more to read to you Psalms 27 with a word of encouragement following. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. Round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for... False witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Listen, <laughs> when it seems like... Uh, Life is ganging up on you and you just can't figure out what in the boo-boo is going on. And it's it, it can really, really get disheartening. And I know, been there, done that, <laughs> as they say, bought the t-shirt. Yeah, but the one thing I can honestly say is God was my refuge and my strength. God was my tabernacle. God was my... my uh, my provider, my healer, my my strengthener, my encourager. He was the one that sustained me through it all. I know you guys heard that song. Through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Well, you will learn as you go through it all. And let me tell you what the Lord showed me a minute ago. And I thought, oh my goodness, what a sweet analogy. When you are sick, sometimes, listen, Sometimes God allows you to be placed in a position where you can do nothing. You have no money. You have no resources. You have no help. You have no support. And you have no answers. Well, what God showed me is there are times when he wants to do something in our lives. And he knows us. He knows that we, like little kids, are going to get all up underfoot and in the way. But listen to this. He will position us in life the same way that he oftentimes will work in a person's body when they're in a car accident or they experience a physical crisis and they need Somebody to come and save their life. Well, there are times where they were awake, okay, and aware. If they had all their faculties, 
they would get in the way of the person trying to save their life. So there's a mechanism that works in the body, just like God, that will knock us unconscious, whether it's too much pain or whether something triggers in the body and the brain shuts down and the person is instantly unconscious without any help from uh, shots or anything. They are just unconscious. And now the, the EMT, I think it is, the emergency worker, ambulance worker, paramedic, they can do everything they need to do, but they have to act quickly before that patient wakes back up. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. And because that patient is unconscious, they can get everything done quickly without the patient feeling any pain either. And they're able to save that patient's life. Now, the sad part is this is how the family feels. They want to be right there monitoring everything you're doing with your loved one. But what do the people do in the emergency room when they get them to the hospital? They push the family away, don't they? And they rush that gurney to take your loved one in to take care of them and handle their emergency situation. Now, if you're underfoot, if you're in the way trying to help your loved one, you could cause that loved one to die because the, the emergency workers can't do what they need to do because you're in the way. So this is what God does. It hurts in life, I know, because that's the way we feel. We feel abandoned and alone. But sometimes that's where God wants us. Now, in the emergency room, I'm still making the analogy, so stick with me. In the emergency room, you have these workers working on your person trying to save their lives. And what ends up happening is you're locked out of the room. You're not allowed to cross the line. Now, this is what God often does. He oftentimes will do this. <laughs> He will put us in a situation where our friends can't help us, our families can't help us, our family members can't help us. I am so feeling this. Our co-workers can't come to our rescue. The banks can't help us. And there are times when the only way we will learn and experience seeing firsthand just how well able God is able to do what he needs to do all by himself. He has to isolate us from all sources, all human sources of help. Then he works a miracle. Nothing you have done, nothing you could do, nothing you could say to resolve the situation. Nothing you could pay, nowhere you could go could resolve the situation. And what God will do is solve it for you. Not only solve it, but there'll be no record of it. <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to get emotional, but I am feeling this so strongly. There are times when God wants you alone. You will not hear his voice. You will not feel his presence. He will not be able to meet your need if you're encumbered with busyness and distractions from other people trying to lend their help. Do you hear what I'm saying? Let me share this real quick testimony. When I was freshly saved, I was only saved maybe about two or three months. And I was in my house alone. Now, I came from the streets. I was not raised in church like some of you. So I had to stop smoking, stop cussing, stop doing everything else I was big and bad enough to do. And my neighbor across the street was playing music. I had an experience I never, ever would have had. Had I had money, a car, do you hear what I'm saying? Had I had friends that were right there to keep me company. This particular night, I was attacked by an extreme sense of loneliness 
I'm a loner by nature. I'm very social, very outgoing, but I'm a loner by nature. And I am well able to be by myself. I like my own company. I don't need to be around people all the time. But this night, I needed to be around somebody, anybody. Now, because the loneliness was, was strong, it was like the devil just turned up the flame and had my neighbor across the street play romantic, love-making jazz. Girlfriend, yours truly, was climbing the walls from a hormone attack. Yeah, think on that one for a moment. And I started getting frustrated because every phone number I called of the people in church were nowhere to be found. But I knew where to find the folks I knew from the street, from the nightclub. Well, I knew how to find them. And I knew they'd be instantly available. But I'm trying hard to live safe. Listen to this. So what ended up happening was I started crying out of frustration. And I got angry with God. Oh, yes, I did. I was very real. I am still very real with God because he knows me better than I do anyway. So no need me trying to fake that little church thing. And I said, how can you expect me? I was having a hissy fit. How can you expect me to sit here by myself? That's not fair. I'm trying to call the saints. I'm trying to live saved and nobody's home. Well, what do you expect me to do? Then I really got mad at him and I put a guilt trip on him. Check this out. I look up real dramatic. Trust me, I was real emotional and dramatic back then. Thank God for inner healing and deliverance. <clears throat> but anyway, for right now, I'll show you just how sorry I was. Y'all can laugh if you want. It makes me want to laugh when I think about it. It's embarrassing. But anyway, I looked up at God and I said, Are you happy now? Oh, so you. you it was pathetic. But anyway. Now, as soon as I did that, the next thing that popped in my head was, Does God keep people company? Now, you know, the human response is, no, he doesn't have time to babysit little spoiled brats like you. He doesn't have time to come to pity parties. So I asked him, do you keep people company? I'm so lonely. Oh, anyway, that was so real and it hurts so bad. But guess what happened? Within a few seconds, okay, I'm not going to cry on this because it still moves me to tears to think of just how important we are to God. I saw a movement in my upper ceiling, my right-hand side, in my living room. And I saw the movement slowly descending. I mean, it was slow. Very steady motion. It was slow. And I'm watching it. I'm watching this happen. And I'm saying to myself, wow, is this what I think it is? And it slowly descends. I don't know what it is yet. Slowly descends. And then now I'm feeling the presence of Jesus Christ in the personality of the Son my savior and he sits down he lands in a seated position knee to knee let's say this is me this is jesus knee to knee eye to eye face to face and i'm looking at him and all of a sudden it's like i'm i'm i'm, I'm slapped with disbelief i can't believe that a busy God would come out of eternity because a spoiled brat was crying the blues because she was by herself one night. I mean, other people would say, girl, get a grip. 
you know, what's the trip? It's not a big deal. Not like you lost your legs. It's not like your house was taken from you and you're out on the street. I was, <laughs> trust me when I say, I was in agony, total agony. God came. I'm making this point to let you see just how important we are to God. He landed in front of me. And instantly I was infused with this silly, giddy, stupid joy. I mean, I was so happy. It was as if somebody gave me happy dust and laughing dust and goofy dust. I was just gone from tears to euphoria, from tears to giddiness. Just ridiculous. And I couldn't stop crying because now I'm grateful for the fact that God did this. But I would never have experienced God keeping me company in the form of his son had I had too many people to come to my rescue. Do you see what I'm saying? There are times, he's, okay, let me explain. He stayed with me all night. I felt his presence so strong. I could see, I could see him, but I couldn't see him. He was right there. I knew right where he was. I knew what his position was. And he didn't say a mumbling word. This story is also in one of my books. But anyway, called that still blows my mind. But let me tell you, he sat there with me. Now, I would normally would not have gotten sleepy till about five or six in the morning because I have always been a night owl and I didn't get up till three or four that afternoon. So there was no way I was going to be sleepy at 11 o'clock at night. All of a sudden I'm sitting there and I can't keep my eyes open and I, I fell asleep and I started dozing. So I just went to bed and I felt his presence when I went to bed, when I woke up that morning, got ready for work, got on the bus, rolled the bus. I felt that presence soon as I got off the bus to go do what I had to do, that's when it finally lifted so I could function. But I'm telling you, I never would have had that experience, you guys. Listen to what I'm saying. There are times when God sets the stage to isolate you. He either wants you to hear his voice or he wants you to to experience something supernatural, a close encounter, a vision, whatever it may be. Or he may want you to hear him say something specific and you won't hear it if you're clamoring around on the phone, running around with your buddies in the car, got the TV blasting. Well, see, I didn't have my TV on. I was trying not to watch secular TV because I was incubating myself to get deeply rooted into God. I was a baby Christian. Listen, you guys, when life isolates you like that, just like when you're unconscious and the EMT is able to do what they've got to do, they may have to do a, um, a, a tracheotomy to save your life. They may have to break a bone to get something out of the way because there's a rod. I mean, you just never know what they may have to do to save your life. But you can't afford to be conscious because you'll be fighting them because of the pain. Well, God will oftentimes position you just as if you are unconscious where you can't do diddly squat. You don't have the money. You don't have the transportation. You don't have the answers. You don't have any solutions and you don't have any help because God wants to move you right out of his way so he can do what he has to do to bless you the way you need to be blessed immediately. Do you hear me? So be encouraged. Please be encouraged. There's a song that says, I won't worry in my struggle. I will fear no foe. When I'm weak and so discouraged, I will sing for joy. I'm not worried about tomorrow's rough and stormy sea. When my future seems uncertain, I have victory. On the outside, I may perish. 
all is well within my soul. When I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Same goes for you. And when you feel lost, that's where you belong. Safe in God's arms. God knows what he's doing with your life, you guys. Don't throw in the towel on him. Just get quiet. Just get quiet so he can strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and let him strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Put my little pat love slant on that. But you hear what I'm saying. Trust in him. He is so for you. He is for you more than you are. He has the wisdom. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. He knows who to move in, how strategically to time things. He knows how to prepare things ahead of time. And you can't be doing anything. So he needs you still and out of the way. And he needs your friends and family still and out of the way so he can do what he knows he must in order to rescue you and the situation and turn it all around for your good. If you could just experience God. And sometimes he takes you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, because he wants to show you just how well able he is to take care of you. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not going to play you and say, psych, when he comes through, he comes through all the way. And you know it was God. So trust in him. Trust in him, you guys. He is a very present help. You have no need to fear. Yes, it's scary. I know. I've been there. I've been in, on, in panic mode. And when God tied my hands and sat me down and he showed me just how well able he is. That's why I'm living in this beautiful home. Because God sat me down, shut me up, made me listen, and directed me uh, 75, 80 miles away from where I used to live. In a town I've never been to before. And blessed me and my husband with a house. $68,000 that now will sell for 150 because he did it in his timing at the bottom of the market. And while I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off, God sat me down and said, shut up, be still, and know that I am God. And I say that to you, Psalms 46. Read it. I'll put it up on the screen. Please. Remember who God really is. He's not a wimp. He's not a jelly bat. He's not a, 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 a dunderhead. He's not stupid. He knows what he's doing. And he knows how to get it done. So instead of me renting a room, which is all I would be able to rent with the little income I make, I'm sitting up here an owner of a two-story home, 1,400 plus square feet with central heating, central air, and a senior gated community that is pristine. I can walk to the pool, sit in a hot tub. I, I mean, it's, it's beautiful here. It's like living in an enchanted forest. And every house has Spanish tile roofs. Beautiful place. Quiet as can be. Peaceful. Birds everywhere. But let me tell you, for the money I make, I would have only been able to live in somebody's garage or rent a room. And I'm able to pay a mortgage, property taxes, house insurance, mortgage insurance, um, HOA dues, all of that for the amount of money I'd be renting a room because God let me go through a dark place knowing what was on the other side of it. And even though I cried my eyes out through most of that horrible experience, this is what God had for us. He told us he was going to choose our inheritance for us. And when my husband knew he was getting ready to go, he quick claimed the house to me. And I am making payments on a house 
less than what I would be paying to rent a room. And I own, I'm not even renting. Who can do that but a great, big, beautiful, wonderful, loving, wise God? Yes, when he says he is for you, he is for you. Nothing can work against you when he is working on your behalf unless you fight him and get in his way. God bless you. Be encouraged. You have a loving father in heaven, and he knows just how to get it done, baby.